Luke chapter 2 verse 10 and 11 but the angel said to them do not be afraid for behold I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people for to you is born this day in the town of David a savior who is Christ the Messiah the Lord I've titled today's message the Christmas crossover so the Christmas crossover really is Christmas a time of celebration, salvation, and motivation. Very easy to remember. I'm going to tell you three things in three topics. Christmas is a time of celebration, it's a time of salvation, and it's a time of motivation. It's a time of celebration because we know him and when we know him and we know his principles that lead to our abundant life or transformation of life, it's a celebration that our lives can be transformed. No matter what your age is, the balance of your life can be beautiful with the touch of the Christmas boy. It's amazing that the baby in the cradle is the king of the universe. It is this season that we celebrate, where Christ brought us salvation. Salvation because we enjoy him. We learn to enjoy Jesus. I want to say this to all of us, brothers and sisters. If you don't enjoy Jesus, you've missed the entire Christmas. We are not tolerating, but we are enjoying. We are not accommodating. We don't accommodate worship of God in our life. We celebrate worship of God in our life. And that's really what makes Christmas. It's about enjoying Jesus. And when you enjoy Jesus, you enjoy his person. You enjoy his personality. Because when you enjoy his divinity, his personality, that's where salvation is. And you worship him for his saving grace. And thirdly, we are motivated by him because we begin to relate with him as the children of God Almighty. And our identity is not from our socioeconomic culture. It doesn't come from our civility. Our identity does not come from our education. Now that we are the children of God through Christ Jesus, our identity comes from God Almighty. That we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. When you think about it, why did God have to become flesh? Jesus was not a baby becoming a God. Jesus was God becoming a baby. Amen. Jesus is the state of God being in flesh. When you really think about it, and let me just tell you, John chapter 1 verse 14, and the word came flesh in the womb of Mary. That's just amazing. God Almighty descended. I'll tell you what I've written down. The word became, the word of God became a single cell, a fertilized egg, an embryo, a baby in the womb of Mary. Pleasant and nourished from being the creator into being a creation. In fact, God descended down the birth canal in the tummy of Mary, infant yet infinite. Finally, God has a face because God became flesh. He took our face so that we can see his face. That's Christmas. That is Christmas. Why did God become flesh? Because God is a spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24. God is a spirit and spirit can't reveal itself and so God took on a human form we call incarnation. God became a human. In the words of Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 this is the mystery in a nutshell that Christ is in you. John chapter 14 verse 9 Jesus said Anybody who has seen me has seen God the Father. That's the beauty of Christmas. While we celebrate Christmas and we enjoy his salvation and we live in the abundance of his motivation, when you really look at Luke chapter 2 and verse 
10 and 11. And the angel of God said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all people. When you really look at that scripture, you find another three things. Number one, it's personal. The angels appeared to the shepherds and said, I bring you, everybody seated here. This is not just a collective message. This is God's personal message. God is telling you personally, I bring you. It's a personal message. Number two, it's a positive message. God says, I bring you good news. But amidst all of what people may call bad, there stands the pillar of good news and hope that Christ was born, bringing light in the darkness. And I want us to know all bad news can be wiped away with the power of this one good news from God Almighty. For unto you is the good news. The message of Jesus is good news. It is good news to every human being. It is good news. And lastly, thirdly, that scripture says it is good news for all. It is a universal stuff. It's personal for each one. It's good news to everyone. And it is universal for everyone. I'll tell you what I've written down. Think about it. Mother Mary, okay, is a virgin girl. Just engaged, going to be married. And she gets pregnant. Aha. Question is, are you willing to allow God to change your plan for his plan? Joseph wants to get married. Last Sunday I preached this. He was willing for God to change his plan for God's plan. I'll tell you what I've written down. Through a scandalous pregnancy, an imposed census by the emperor, an untimely trip to Bethlehem on the, bank of a do on the back of a donkey, <laughs> An overcrowded inn where there was no place for them. Through it all, God triumphs in Mary's story. If Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, was willing to enter the world through a manger of animals and shepherds and swaddling clothes, don't you think he's willing to enter your world, no matter what the situation be, if he's willing to be born in a barnyard, he can be born in your life because God comes to change whatever situation you may be in. That is the truth. Hallelujah. That is the greatness of the birth of our Lord. He was not born in a palace. He was born in the lowliest of the lowest. Why? Even the poor people would have some place to give birth to their children. But the God of the universe was born in the feeding trove of Bethlehem's manger. Why? To tell you and me, your heart is never so poor. Your heart is never so evil that he couldn't come in. He can come in. Isn't it? That a lot of times we are so careful we tell our children don't associate with the wrong friends because you don't want your name spoiled. But look at the life of Jesus. His bloodline comes from heaven but his pedigree, his family chart from the Bethlehem City Corporation has some funny names in it. Let me read out some names for you from Matthew chapter 1. Tamar, who was abandoned by her dead husband's family. Ruth, who was an immigrant from the cursed land of Moab. Rahab, who was a prostitute and held a commercial sex worker license from the city of Jericho. You have David as his great grandfather, who was an adulterer. Solomon, who was a philanderer, was his great grandfather. But the Messiah was still born, not because of the greatness of his ancestors, but in spite of the weakness of the ancestors, Jesus was born in the same family to tell you and me, he will never become impure with your impurity, but you will become pure with his purity. When you touch him and he touch you, it changes everything that's the story you can walk into his presence anytime your impurity will not touch him but his purity will touch you Amen. hallelujah that's the power of the Christmas crib mm -hmm. hallelujah it's a positive news because the king God Almighty came into a bad situation I don't know if you have thought about it 
I've read the Bible so many times, especially the Gospels, trying to understand this and some questions I've had in my mind. Lord Jesus, when you were young, my age like a teenager a few years ago, <laughs> were you scared that you'd, you wouldn't do a good job in your father's carpentry shop? Lord Jesus, what was your first word as a baby? Interestingly, these details are not there in the Bible. You know why? Because God intentionally left it out. He did not include those details in the Bible because God appreciates variety of life. His idea is not to bring religiosity where everyone looks like the Xerox copy of another. God is not interested in uniformity. He's interested in unity. He's not interested in beating people down into some kind of a strict culture. He's a God who appreciates different temperaments and varieties of life. That's why he left it out of the Bible. Because he is not threatened, he is not irritated by the freedoms he has given you. As long as you include his will as a choice in your freedoms. That is so important. The more I look at Jesus, the more I see freedom, good news. I thought some teenagers will put some special offerings today when I talk about freedoms. Jesus brought freedoms. It's, the Bible does not talk about these kind of codes of conduct. Why? Because God wants us to be led by the Spirit of God. Which keeps us in morality of integrity, humility and generosity. Not a spirit of rebellion but a spirit of submission. That comes from within and not which is forced from without. It's universal good news to wise men. The Bible says wise men came from the east looking for Jesus. And they came to Jerusalem. The temple of the Jewish community was there. And they came there saying, we're looking for Jesus who was born the king of the Jews. They spoke to Herod. Who were these wise men? The Bible says they were wise men from the east. Where they were from? East of Jerusalem. Where is east of Jerusalem? Persia, Afghanistan, India, China and parts of um, Asia all the way to Japan are parts of the east of Bethlehem. Wise men came from there looking for he who was born the king of the Jews. Herod said, I don't know him. Herod the king was sitting in Jerusalem. The wise men also went to Jerusalem because the temple of the Jewish people those days stood there. The wise men went there and asked, where is Jesus? And they said, why have you come looking for him? And the wise men said, we saw a star in the sky. We saw a sign in the sky. We've seen the galaxies celebrate the birth of the king. So we have come to worship him. Herod said, I don't know. You've come looking at a sign, but I don't know. Since you said he's the king of the Jewish people, let's ask the Jewish people. He called for the scholars. The scholars from the temple of Jerusalem came. They opened up the book of Micah and the book of Isaiah and the prophecies and said, yes, Jesus would be born in the town of Bethlehem. Herod said, that's good news. Said to the wise men, go to Bethlehem, look for him. And when you find him, let me know. He didn't have the time or the interest to go searching for Jesus. And what surprised me, brothers and sisters, what surprised me is, she said, surprise or did I feel bad? It's this, the Jewish scholars who knew the Bible, who told the wise men where to find him, these fellows didn't go. Isn't it amazing that religion even today celebrates Christmas without Jesus? Isn't it funny that religion today celebrates Christmas in the temple without going to Bethlehem to find the reason for the season? They didn't bother about going. They said to the wise men, you go. The wise men went and they found the baby with the mother 
and Joseph standing there, they knelt down and worshipped him. Now this is what I have written down. Wise men came to Jerusalem looking at a sign. They came to the temple looking at a sign. It was a miracle. It was a healing. It was some prophetic word. It was a sign. Superb. A sign will lead you to the temple. But only the scripture will lead you to Christ. It is the word of God that leads us to Jesus. Are you still being led by signs and wonders and miracles? Our God is a God of miracles. And I believe today there are going to be healings and miracles. But don't you stop with signs and wonders. Go to the scripture. Because it's the scripture that leads you to Jesus and his fullness. I would encourage us who are religious. Don't you park your life in the bungalow of religion. Religion. Put it in the first gear and go to Bethlehem by the scripture. Go outside religion and find Christ in his personality. Find Jesus for it is Jesus that we worship. Let me tell you what I've written here. The star was enough to lead the wise men to Jerusalem but it took scriptures to lead them to Jesus. They found Christ because they heeded the sign and believed the scripture. Called by a sign. Instructed by the scripture, the wise men were directed by dreams from God. Do you see progress in there? Those who accepted a sign, a miracle God gave, to them God gave the scriptures. And when they accepted the scriptures and obeyed the Bible, then God began to speak to them in dreams in a personal way. I want to challenge you. Let's learn to be progressive in our walk with God. To go from one level to the other in the grace of God Almighty. And when the wise men came to Jesus, they realized the gate of human history had swung open on the hinges of a Bethlehem gate. They gave gifts to Jesus. Gold because he is king of kings. Frankincense because he is the high priest forever. And myrrh because they knew he came to die for human salvation. Herod missed it because he spent more time on his throne than at the cross. Many still do. They missed the chance of the open door. They let the birth of Jesus pass by. The miracle of Bethlehem is still happening. God is still entering the hamlets of human hearts. Which is why Revelation chapter 3, the Bible says in verse 20, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open his heart, I will come in and I'll cut the cake with him. That's my version. Bible says I'll have dinner with him. Just paraphrasing it for Christmas. The three more things about Christmas. I've titled it News to Use. We all have a lot of news which keeps coming, right? <laughs> but this is news to use. <laughs> God loves us. God is with us and God is for us. Personally, God loves you. God is in you and God is for you. God is with us, Emmanuel. God is for you, is your protection. And God loves you, Christ and his grace. When Jesus was born, one angel appeared in the sky and told the shepherds, Shepherds, unto you is a savior born in Bethlehem. You know, God knows what sign to give each one. And you will get yours from him. He gives each one what they can understand. And the Bible says, the shepherds saw an angel come and announce, for unto you is born a son, unto you is given a king, a savior. And when they heard that, and they were watching. The sky was filled with a host of angels. Thousands and thousands of angels filled the realms of the heavens. And you have them singing, glory to God in the highest. Even when you read the book of Revelation, the church does not weep through the ages, but the church triumphs through the ages in songs of victory, for the Messiah liveth forever. And we march in the grace of God Almighty.
The angels made a big deal about the arrival of the king. And the angels gave Jesus a gift. You know what was the gift? It was the gift of praise. It was the gift of worship. And I want to challenge all of us, brothers and sisters, today, if you have not given your worship to God, your Christmas means nothing. The greatest gift you can give Jesus is worship to God Almighty. Unless you worship Jesus, unless you greet him with your praises, your Christmas is incomplete. Meet him at the cross. Meet him at the crib. Worship him. Oh, give him a mighty hand clap. Fill your church. Honor him. For praise is due to him. Hallelujah. 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 Our God is a good God. Give him worship. Anytime we trust an object or activity to give us life or to give us meaning, we are making it an object of worship and we are making it our king, our savior. It gives you gratification but not satisfaction. You end up with a broken heart. You're infatuated but then discouraged. You're enthralled but then you're angry. But when you really look at Christmas, you will find something. Somewhere in the human timeline, from the Garden of Eden to the book of Revelation, the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis to the New Jerusalem in the book of Revelation, in the timeline of maybe 10,000, 50,000 years of human history of the Bible, you will find a tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden where people lost the tree of life. And in the book of Revelation, you'll find God reinstalling the tree of life. But in between, you will find the tree on which Jesus hung. And for those who miss the tree of life in the Garden of Eden, here hangs the tree of life in Jerusalem. For all who look to him, you have the tree of life of Revelation. If we can learn to look to the tree on which Jesus hung, then every blessing of God is yours to have. Hallelujah. I've written this down. For the one who made everything made himself nothing. Maybe some of you are sitting here saying, Pastor, thank you for the lovely message about Christmas. And Oh, you're having fun on the stage and we're having fun down here. And yeah, of course, today we're going to have good times. But you know, Pastor, behind my lacme cream face is a broken heart. You know, pastor, I lost so and so. I've been betrayed. Or maybe I'm not sure what I will do tomorrow. I don't know why I got this news now. That there's this problem in our family. Or that I don't think I'll live long enough to see my next Christmas. I don't know what you're struggling with. But I want you to know this. Today is good news. God understands your pain. God understands your weakness. And if you read the Bible, Joseph was in prison. Daniel was a slave. But God made prime ministers out of them. He took counselors out of the captive. God brings Sundays out of Good Fridays. He still brings beauty out of the mangers of Bethlehem. And because of Jesus... I know I have a friend in heaven. I have a savior that loves me. Because of Christmas, that child in the cradle went as the king on the cross and today is the Lord in eternity. Hallelujah. Because of what Jesus did, as he took my shame, there is no shame in my life. It's all washed by his grace. There's only one writing on my report card in heaven on yours in heaven, it's saved by grace. Because he fell down from eternity into time, from righteousness into sin, from being a spirit into a body. He descended from being God into a human. He descended the literal birth canal of a woman so that you and I can ascend as sons and daughters of God's most high. That we can step up as the righteous of God Almighty. And today, we are delivered by the grace of God.
Christmas is Christmas when Christ is Christ. Don't be the scholar and the king that missed Jesus. Be the wise man. Be the shepherd. Be the Mary. Be the Joseph. Be the thousands who found Jesus. When Simeon, the old man who dedicated Jesus, this is from the story of Luke chapter 2, and Anna, who was a prophetess, when these both came to the temple, thousands and ten thousands of people were going to Jerusalem to worship in the temple. Mary and Joseph were walking out of the temple after dedicating the baby Jesus. They were walking out. Ten thousands upon ten thousands ignored this little lady with a baby and they're running into the temple but two people led by the Holy Spirit the Bible says Simeon and Anna stopped outside they saw the baby with the mother walked up to them and said can we hold the baby for a minute Mary looks at Joseph Joseph nods it's okay Mary gives the baby Jesus to Anna and to the prophet Simeon they hold the child in their hand and they say Lord thank you for showing us your salvation thank you for the opportunity to hold Messiah for the first time Simeon and Anna did not enter the temple thereafter they walked back because they knew one thing salvation doesn't come from the insights of religion salvation comes from the person of Christ Jesus And I want us to remember one thing. Thank you for coming to church today. But salvation is not in a building. It's in a person. Salvation is in Christ Jesus. Before you leave the building, carry Christ with you.